Okay, ladies, here's an update on the video I made uh, about 10 or 11 days ago about cutting everyone out of my life. So it's been about 10 days, 11 days, and I'm still with it. I blocked everybody. So a whole bunch of people I'm not talking to. Um, I haven't been updating my status on WhatsApp. I haven't been looking at anybody else's because everybody's blocked. I'm like completely disconnecting myself from a whole group of people trying to give myself a new mental diet because I'm trying to get to the next level in life here. And I feel like um, a lot of the thoughts I was thinking and people I was around and foods I was eating and music I was listening to and environments I was in was like, they weren't necessarily bad, but they were not helping me get to where I'm going, if that makes any sense. It was kind of, they were kind of stunting my growth. So, and I kind of felt like I was at a little bit of a plateau and I want like a little extra boost to get into the next level. So I cut everybody out of my life. The only people I'm currently communicating with are people from um, my courses that I'm taking online. So there are people who are helping me in in my journey, um, there are other students. And um, so I cut a bunch of people out of my life, a bunch of people who were addictive. I haven't been dating. I haven't been even really going out in public. When I do go out in public, I'm not wearing red. I'm not dressing up. This is like the first day I've had makeup on in a long time. Um, I'm just like, trying to be as unnoticeable as possible because I really want to put all my energy into what I'm trying to create right now and how I'm trying to get to my next level. So for me, I can focus better when I just like, when I just focus on one thing and I get rid of all the distractions that tends to work for me pretty well. So that's what I'm doing. I've also cleaned out my body. I've been drinking green juice almost every day. I'm not eating any meat right now. Um, I'm basically on a vegan, maybe a little bit vegetarian diet because I am still having Greek yogurt. I ate a couple of eggs the other day too. But um, other than that, I'm really, I'm eating all plants, all plants all day long. And I'm also not having any sugar and any flour. That's not new to me though. I mean, I haven't been eating sugar and flour for a long time, but I'm back to weighing and measuring all of my meals just to get my mind in a really good, disciplined, controlled state where I'm not taking too much pleasure in certain things. Like for me, food is a really big pleasure. It's a very compulsive thing that I can get into. And um, right now I really want to focus on what I'm trying to create. So... I'm being really strict with my food. I mean, I'm eating a lot of food and I'm eating really healthy, but I'm not eating more than I'm supposed to. I'm not eating at wrong times. I'm not just like mindlessly walking around, like picking up different snacks, even if they are healthy. I'm not even doing that. I'm eating certain things in certain amounts at certain times just to get my brain nice and focused and just... You know, I'm being really careful with music too. I know that music is very influential in my brain. Like I may not even realize it, but like I'll be somewhere and I'll hear a song and it'll just kind of change my brain chemistry. It'll change my line of thinking. You know, I may hear a song like from 20 years ago and it will bring me back to that time period, which when I'm trying to focus on what I'm creating, I don't need the distractions of, old memories or, you know, old periods of time in my life. Um, what else am I doing to get myself nice and focused? Um, I did not go to the Dominican Republic this month. I always go on the first. I actually, um, I changed my ticket. I canceled my flight. And uh, I didn't want to go there because I know how I get when I go down there. Everything is just so free and fun. And I live a very unstructured life there, which is great. It's fine, you know. 
it's, you know, it's good for my feminine side, but the downside of that is I don't go to bed on time. I stay up late. Um, I hang out with people that may be vibrating on a lower frequency than me. Um, I'm, I can't always find the healthiest foods when I need them. So I'm eating like a bunch of fried cheese, like three times a day and you know, not like the worst foods in the world, but you know, you do that every day or every night. I'm eating fried cheese every night before I go to bed. I'm going to bed at all different times, sometimes five in the morning, sometimes one in the morning. It's like there's not a lot of consistency. Just, you know, just like throwing my body off its rhythm. It's very loud there too. Everywhere I go, there's music playing everywhere. And music, like I was saying before, it can really influence the mind. Not that the music is bad, but it's, you know, it is like one set of thoughts that I get from certain types of music. So it's not necessarily peaceful or tranquil or helping me to get into a meditative state. It's for fun and partying and being happy and having fun. And then all the lyrics in the music are about love and romance. Like 99% of Spanish songs are about love and romance. And there's nothing wrong with that, but I'm trying to get to another level here. And I've cut a bunch of people out of my life right now and, I, and I've blocked them. And I'm not trying to think about love and romance and boys and other distracting things right now. So being around that kind of music is just going to remind my subconscious mind of those things I'm trying to not do right now because I'm trying to use all of my brain power and my soul power and my manifesting power and just I'm trying to use everything I have to get me to the next level and I don't want any of the energy leaking out in areas I don't want it to be right now. So um staying away from the music. So I'm going to the gym every day. I'm doing yoga every day. Um trying to be less noticeable in public because they do not want to attract any type of sexual energy towards me right now. Um my food is really disciplined and really super healthy. I'm getting a lot of nutrition in my body right now. I'm just, in the past 10 days, I've just been detoxing off of validation. Validation from men, validation from other people, the validation I get whenever I post new photos and, you know, new. I didn't say nude. I said new, new, <laughs> new photos on my WhatsApp status so all my friends in the DR can see it and say nice things about me be like oh you look so pretty and you know like all those things are great and fine but they're also distracting and it also puts me in a very outward focusing kind of mindset where I'm getting praise from a lot of people outside of me Okay, from their words, like when I go out, when I spend time with friends down there, when I go on dates down there, there's all this outside validation coming towards me and that's great and fine, but the more I get from the outside, the less I have to come up with my own validation from myself. It makes it very easy for my own internal validation muscle to just not have to work. Like she just she's like oh we don't need to muscle up here because we're getting plenty of validation from other people and she gets weak and the muscle is not exercised and it just kind of goes dormant so the practice i'm doing right now where i'm getting all the validation out of my life and just like kind of ridding myself of all the things that surround that at least for now, because I want to build up my own validation muscle inside and just clean myself and purge myself. And, you know, like I'm purging my body of toxins and purging my mind of toxins at the same time. And, um, you know, I've, I've noticed um, this past week, I've had some really rough moments where I just, just felt like I was gonna just start crying. 
just wanted to start crying. Couldn't even tell you exactly, exactly why, but like, it's just the feeling of like wanting something, wanting to go and grab at something, this thing that makes you feel good and makes you feel comfortable and gives you a nice dopamine hit and a serotonin hit and an oxytocin hit. You know, all those people I was dealing with in the phone calls and the text messages and the validation and the, you know, dressing up and looking beautiful with makeup and hair and wearing a red dress and going out and everywhere I go, people are validating me and, you know, and like, not even just that, but even just the foods I was eating. When you're snacking on things that taste really good to you and that you really like and you're getting more hits of all different kinds of brain chemicals every time you do that. Like multiple times a day, you're getting hits of brain chemicals that make you feel good from the activities you're doing, from the validation you're getting, from the food you're eating. And when you take all that away in one swoop, you feel like a pain inside yourself because you want that stuff. You want all that stuff back in your life and you're telling yourself you can't have it right now and you just, you feel like this fussy little whiny child inside of you and that's like, no, I want my stuff. I want my thing. It makes me happy. <laughs> you know, it's like I feel that happening inside of me but I'm disciplining myself right now and I'm cleaning myself up. Not that that stuff is bad. It's not bad but you can't just overindulge in everything that feels good all the time and say, oh, I'm just being feminine all the time. It doesn't work well. It does, if you know how to balance it, me personally, I'm not great at balancing it yet. I'm still figuring that out. That's why I have to do what I'm doing right now to clean up some of the messes I made because I was being way too feminine for a little too long and I, I gained some weight I messed up my finances because I was just feeling all feminine and happy and just, you know, swiping my credit card. And, you know, that's not really something I do anymore. That's something I stopped doing a long time ago. And my feminine journey has, like, made me do some old habits that I had stopped doing a long time ago. And, you know, I started getting kind of messy with my food and, you know, not really watching what I was eating and the weight started to slowly creep up on me. And then, you know, I'm going out all the time because I'm just being feminine and having fun. And, you know, every time you go out, what happens? You have a glass of wine. And, you know, after a couple weeks of that, you know, you've had a lot of wine. Now your body's all swollen and bloated and your face is getting fat and you have, you know, like a double chin now, you know, and you, you know, your belly is getting just full and bloated and you're just, you know, my ankles were getting fat, my feet were all swollen. It's just, I started to feel uncomfortable in my body. I wasn't sleeping right. I was missing some of my dance classes and some of my online classes, just not really journaling, just my speech class every day. I'm supposed to log on in the morning. I'm missing multiple of those because I was staying up late, so then I was sleeping in late. Just, you know, life was just getting kind of messy because I was just being like overly feminine and just having like too much fun. And once you're doing that for a while, it's not even that much fun after a few days. Like, it's like I'm messing up my whole life to do stuff that's not even that much fun because I've been doing it too much. So I'm just like resetting myself now. It's about day 10. I did have some days where I just felt like I was going to start crying. I thought I was going to fold a few times and just go eat whatever I wanted or, you know, just go out somewhere and have a drink and like just get social with people and, you know, put on like a red dress and go out and have people tell me how amazing I am. Like, no, if I go out and do that, I'm going to mess up what I'm doing. So I've been... You know, I've still been enjoying my life, but just in a different way, in like a quiet, tranquil, private kind of way. I'm not just like sitting like a hermit in my house, like I'm going to the gym and, you know, I'm doing a lot of work, like 
inner work, self work. I'm talking to people from my online courses and you know, I'm working on stuff like that. I don't, you know, I'm doing stuff inside of my house and you know, there are moments I just want to like go and unblock a couple people and just, you know, hear their voice and talk to them. But I'm like, no, 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 I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. One, because it's going to mess up what I'm trying to do. And it's going to put me back in the mindset I was in 10 or 11 days ago, which was not the mindset I need to be in to get to another level. I need to be clear minded and uninfluenced and on a good, strict mental diet, manifesting the things I want to create. And two, a lot of the people I was dealing with don't have much of a purpose for me other than having fun right now. There's like really no future or anything significant that's going to come out of it, which almost makes it almost a pointless relationship, you know? Not that like the people are bad, but they're not going where I'm going. They're not going to the levels I'm going to, at least not right now. I had made another video about that, about leaving poor people behind. I made that well, about, nine, about 19 or 20 days ago. But yeah, and I wanted to clarify something too about leaving poor people behind. I don't just mean financially poor. What I really mean is like poor as in like their mental wealth. Like, what levels are they trying to go to in life? If they don't have many goals and they just live for today because that's what makes them happy, or they're just kind of content with not going further than where they are, I would call that poor. I would call that like a poor person mentality. And I'm trying to go big places. So I'm trying to surround myself with people that are going to the same destination I'm going to because there's a much bigger chance I'm going to get there if I hang with those people as opposed to people who don't want anything more than the little bit they have. And you know, there's something to be said about that to just be content with a little a tiny bit of life and, you know, a little tiny bit of money and a little you know, a tiny bit of education and just being, you know, happy enough with the way your life is that you don't even try to mental, uh, you know, like level up your mind. You don't really want to learn anything new. You just live for today, drink, go find someone to shack up with maybe because that's a pleasurable activity and drinking alcohol is a pleasurable activity and you know, go to work on Monday and get some money so you can start, you know, doing it again as soon as you get your next paycheck. I mean, there are some people that are happy like that. Or maybe they're only happy like that because they don't know anybody who's doing anything more than that. And the town where I live in the DR, there's a lot of people with that mentality that like, you know, just party every day because you don't know when you're going to die. You know, and there's something really nice about that. There's something that works about that. But I get bored easily. I can do that for maybe a couple of weeks. And then I'm like, I need something more in life. I can't just live like there's no tomorrow every day. Like, I personally need more. I wish sometimes that I was a more simple-minded person who didn't need more, but I do. I do. So, um, I'm staying away from people that don't have really big dreams. I'm staying, all right, let's not even call them poor people. That's what I originally called them, but I think that's a little confusing when I say that. So, I'm staying away from and leaving behind 
people that have small dreams. That's more what I meant by that. People with small dreams. I want to be around people with big dreams right now. So I can catch some of their wind and some of their energy and grow my own. When I'm around people with small dreams, I'm already the winner in the whole group. I'm already, you know, the most successful person in the group. There's something nice about that because you get to feel successful, but are you going to become any more successful than you already are? It's a slim chance. So it's really important for me right now to cut everybody out and stay spending time and communicating with the group of women that I'm dealing with right now, where there's a lot of them who have more success than I do in certain areas of their life. And it's good for me to be around those kind of people because they know some things I don't know yet. And if I'm hanging out with them, they're going to teach me some of these things. You know, I get to have intelligent conversations with them where I can ask them questions and I can learn new things that I've been wondering about and wanting to know about or maybe things I've never even heard of that I can be like oh my god I'm gonna use that in my life that sounds amazing you know when I hang with my poor friends or my friends with small dreams you know there's not even a whole lot of talking it's usually just dancing and, you know, yeah, dancing, like small talk, but nothing deep. Like we don't talk about a whole lot of deep things. And the few times I have accidentally started talking deep with them, I literally, Um, I get a blank stare or I actually literally the last time, which was a few weeks ago, my friend starts, um, saying to me, he was literally like, why are we talking about this right now? Like, why are we talking about this? I was like, what do you mean? He's like, we're talking about like what's inside of me and it's important. And like, I could just see he just he was like well why would we even be talking about anything like spiritual or in depth it was very weird that moment I'm like wow this person really doesn't even care to get to know me and now that they're getting to know me in this moment I can tell that they don't even actually like who I actually am and who I'm trying to become and then I went back to just talking about easier stuff and then everything was fine and I hung out with this friend for a couple of days and I started to feel really bored I guess because we were only having interactions and conversations on his level and because that was a level I passed many levels ago it was like I was in high school and somebody put me back in the first grade. Yeah, it's easy, but it's boring and pointless. And you're like, I already know how to do all this. This is like, I passed this grade a long time ago. And um, yeah, so I don't know. So anyway, yeah, I didn't go to the Dominican Republic. Um, probably going to go back December 1st. I'm going to see where I'm at mentally then. If I do go back on December 1st, um, I think I'm going to go somewhere far away from my town again. I always wanted to go to Monte Cristi. That is... It's on the north coast and it's um, it's like right next to Haiti. It's a really beautiful place. I've never been there myself, but a lot of people have told me about it. And it's a very quiet place. It's like, a, it's like a small town and it's quiet and the people are not party animals there. And it's far away from the airport, so there's not even a lot of tourists or anything like that. And the beaches are really beautiful. 
Um, as long as I could find a place to stay, stay with really great Wi-Fi, I think I'll just go there and just spend a couple weeks and, you know, be very quiet and peaceful and I won't know anybody over there and I can just be in nature and there won't be loud blurring music. And as long as I can log on to do all my all my online stuff and I'm sure I can find a, um, a dance teacher out there so I can keep up with my dance lessons. You know, I like to go to dance lessons every day, but I'm sure I can find like a dance teacher or somebody to see me a couple hours a day. And I was even thinking, um, I'm gonna ask my dance teacher well, my, my normal dance teacher in the DR, when I do go back, um, I'm going to ask if we can do the lessons without music because I want to stay in the state I'm in right now. And I'm, I'm, I'm pretty close to music free right now. I did hear a little bit of music in one of the dance classes I went to today, but that was a class with other people in it. So I didn't, you know, I didn't have the right to ask for the music to be shut off, but um, all my dance classes in the DR, they're, um, they're private lessons, so it won't affect anybody else if I want the music off. So, um, I'm going to ask for that and what else? Hmm. I'm probably going to start wearing hijab maybe tomorrow. Yeah, when I go out, I think it's gonna help me. That always helps me like connect with myself, kind of like block out the outside world and just become more centered. Yeah, I think that'll be good. And um, I should start praying five times a day again. It's been a while. <laughs> yeah, you guys will definitely know when I'm praying a lot because you'll never see me with makeup. Because every time I pray, I have to like wash my face first. I gotta wash all my makeup off anyway. I'm not putting makeup on five times a day. That's for sure. So. <laughs> we'll see how it goes, girls. And I'm going to sleep in my journal in my bed. Okay. So that as soon as I wake up, I can start journaling. I've been trying to meditate when I wake up in the morning, but I don't want to sit up to do it because it hurts my back. So like I'm still just laying there trying to meditate, but then I like kind of fall back to sleep. I don't know. There's got to be like a better way to meditate. <sighs> You know, I'm just gonna start, like, I feel like listening to meditation videos while I'm meditating, for some reason, I feel like that's not real meditation. I'm probably wrong. Because that just seems too easy. But maybe that's just, I just need to suck it up and just realize that I'm I'm at a place, you know, I'm a beginner and I need a guided meditation because for me to just sit there and meditate all on my own, God, it's like torture. <laughs> so maybe I'll find a, another good guided meditation. I just like dread meditating. I don't know why. It's supposed to be fun and relaxing, right? I don't know. Well, anyway, girls, that is my update on cutting everyone out of my life. Wish me luck. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it for a whole entire month, but I'll be happy with myself if I do it for two whole weeks or even three weeks. Well, wow. I'm a little bit afraid that once I go back into the regular world that I'm going to get sucked into it again and I'm going to lose my connection with God because... When I'm like this, when I cut everybody out and I cut out the bad foods and like I'm being really healthy and I'm staying away from, you know, so many things, even music, 
I can connect with God. I can connect with my higher self and a lot of things become easier. But I feel like, how can I stay like this forever? One day I'm going to have to go back. This is so unrealistic. But is it unrealistic? There has to be people in the world that live like this all the time, right? Or at some point, I'll just get so good at staying connected to God that it won't matter what's going on in the outside world or what music is on or, you know, what else is happening. I will still maintain that connection. I won't get cut off. That's, that's probably how that works, but I don't know yet because I'm not there. But... Okay, that's it. Bye for now. Talk to you girls later.